Tifway Bermuda grass response to potassium fertilization by J.B. Sartain. This was published in Crop Science in 2002. Dr. Sartain discusses the influence of potassium in the introduction and various uh, reasons why this study was conducted. Back in these days, there was a lot of potassium, as there still is today, a lot of potassium applied relative to nitrogen, and many of the researchers were perplexed why this was happening. We don't usually see responses to potassium, and yet turf managers, in particular golf, were applying a lot of potassium, as they still do today. And so Dr. Sartain introduced, used that in the introduction to justify the, the study. And he says at the end of the introduction, although the effects of K and turf grass has been studied for decades, there is no consensus among turf grass managers as to the proper K fertilization program. This research was undertaken to evaluate the influence of potassium fertilization rate and source on Tifway Bermuda grass, shoot growth rate, root density, visual quality, and tissue concentration. Uh, so that was the introduction. This was a three year study conducted in Gainesville, Florida from 1996 through 1998. The maliquin extractable potassium prior to treatment was around 17 parts per million, which was considered low and still is considered low. The malic 3 on that, that soil, was there was also a correlation done, and that's around 17 or 18 uh, as well for malic, for malic 3 people listening. Two potassium sources were used, potassium chloride and potassium sulfate. There was a little bit of a, a oversight in this study, which I'm going to discuss as Dr. Sertana discusses as well with the two potassium sources. Potassium sources were applied at eight rates. They were applied at zero, uh, three, three quarters of a pound, one and a half pounds, two pounds, three pounds, four and a half pounds, six pounds, or seven and a half pounds. That's the rate of potassiums, the rates of potassium that, we, that he applied. So he was trying to figure out how much potassium you actually need before you no longer see a beneficial response. Nitrogen was applied monthly at one pound. They, they, they did two 90-day cycles, so there's a total of six pounds of nitrogen applied throughout the study. The, he measured visual quality based on one to nine with five and a half as the minimum acceptable limit. Shoot growth rate varied by potassium source and the results in discussion. Now, our Sartain mentions in each, each of the three years, potassium chloride treated burning grass produced greater turf grass rate, growth rates than turf fertilized with potassium sulfate. The potassium source effect may have been an artifact of the experimental design and that ammonium sulfate was applied to the KCL plots in order to balance out the quantity of sulfur. So he tried to account for the amount of sulfur that he was applying or sulfate that he was applying in the, KC, uh, the potassium sulfate plots by applying ammonium sulfate to the other KCL plots. But he s hypothesized that that might have actually skewed the results. So I wouldn't have a whole lot of confidence, nor do I think would, uh, would Dr. Sartain have in the re uh, results from the study re with regards to the source of potassium imparting a different effect. It may but there was a little bit of a of a oversight in the study that may have altered that. So so be aware of that. Shoot growth rate. You'll notice that in two, 1997, the shoot growth rate um, continued to increase until about the three pound of potassium mark, or the two to two to one. Actually, actually that's a <clears throat> yeah, about a two to one in decay. And in 1998, it leveled off at a, a little bit less than that, two to one in decay. Um, yeah, two to one in decay or two pounds of potassium per year in 1998 was where the max out, where the quality or the growth rate maxed out, and about three pounds of potassium per year in 1997 is where the growth rate maxed out. So there was no need to continue to apply more and more potassium as you see here from these bars. All these are the same, and yet more and more, and more potassium was applied with no additional benefit. Now remember this increase here from zero to the two pound of potassium per year. This is on low potassium soils, don't forget. Okay, this soil started off, I think at 17 parts per million, very low potassium, and indeed there was a beneficial response in the turf grass when you started off with that little amount of potassium. When we go to the tissue potassium, we see that the there was some differences until they reached the two pounds of potassium per year mark, which is a little bit less than a two to one in decay. And so when you, apply nitrogen or potassium at around a two to one in decay, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little bit more occasionally, uh, you're gonna max out the tissue potassium and there was no longer any benefit to applying more and more potassium in the tissue, all right? We got a root weight. There was no differences in root rate even compared to the non-treated potassium. You can see all of these, right? All of these were the same from zero all the way up to the highest amount of potassium at 7.5 pounds per year. They're all the same. There's no differences in root weight even from a turf grass grown in very low potassium soils. 
the okay now we go to the quality ratings it says the quality ratings were not influenced by potassium in any year so we talked about uh, root, uh, shoot growth rate being influenced there was a difference in growth rate but the quality was not influenced by potassium in any year okay it remained high throughout the study mean quality ratings range from 6.7 to 6.9 so they were acceptable and there was no influence on turf grass quality with regards to the amount of potassium on a low case soil varying from no potassium all the way up to seven and a half pounds of potassium per year the soil analysis soil ph and malic one extractable nutrient levels prior to treatment applications were within optimum ranges for bunny grass growth except for potassium okay so there was a good location in terms of attempting to see differences or attempting to tease out the effect of potassium or the critical level of potassium in the soil i mean we did see differences in the growth rate but not the quality okay and you'll see here the soil chemical pro properties prior to treatment application of potassium was at 17 parts per million which is very low now this table here table three the malic one soil extractable levels of selected nutrients by season and you'll notice at the beginning of the season in may he has all the potassium rates on here going from zero to seven and a half pounds per year and he has the soil potassium in may in july and in october in 1998 and you'll notice in may is when all the potassium levels are at their lowest and in the fall in october is when all the potassium levels are at their greatest and so that's when you would want to consider taking a soil sample if you choose to go that route is in the spring when all the potassium concentrations are at their lowest if you're dealing with similar soils in north florida now the conclusions when a critical minimum potassium tissue concentration was achieved which was approximately one and a half percent this was an error actually and this was a typo in there this should be grams per kilogram so it's one and a half percent actually yeah that actually might be right anyway it's one and a half percent additional potassium does not result in additional potassium uptake shoot growth or improved visual quality of root growth in tifway bermuda grass so once you hit one and a half percent that's it there was no more increase in this particular study um, applications of potassium did not result in additional root growth beyond that the critical malic one extractable level of soil potassium appears to be around 30 parts per million malic one and remember a correlation was done on this soil between Malik 1 and Malik 3, and the Malik 3 was just a fraction more, so it's almost exactly the same number. So it's around 30 ish was the critical potassium level in the soil, Malik 3 potassium or Malik 1 potassium. And anything greater than that, you wouldn't expect to see a response. Anything less than that, you very likely to see a response. Information collected throughout this three year study suggests that potassium rates in excess of a 0.5 to 0.6 times that of nitrogen. So that's about a two to one in decay or two to one and a smidgen more, one and a half in decay. Um, do not result in additional tissue uptake, shoot, and root growth or enhanced visual quality. So that's the take home message. Anything greater than a two to one in decay, maybe just a little bit more two to one in decay, anything more than that didn't result in any additional benefit. And so all these these potassium uh, going out at you know one to ones and one to twos, these 10, 10, 10s and these 13, 13, 13s and you know 10, 0, 20s and all these very high potassium fertilizers, they in this study they showed clear evidence that in this setting there was no additional benefit once you got to about a two to one in decay or, the, or thereabouts. If you want more information on this uh, study, I, the long form version of this. Uh, paper can be viewed here on this link above. Thank you.